I'm here to tell that story. Thankfully, I'm alive, but it was the most difficult, harrowing experience of my entire life. Hi, I'm Lawrence, a flight instructor and flight school owner in beautiful Maui, Hawaii. Come join us while we fly around the beautiful islands of Hawaii in this gorgeous Cirrus SR-22. Today's special guest is Lieutenant Commander Chris Hubbard, a former F-18 Super Hornet flight instructor, Top Gun pilot. He has over 2,000 hours in the F-18. He's going to be checking out the Cirrus as he's a civilian now, and we're going to be talking about how to use the angle of attack in the Cirrus and how it's going to help you become a better and safer pilot. So let's go do some flying and meet Chris. Good morning. We're going to IFR to Honda today. We're going to do the RNAV approach, and uh, then we're going to have a uh, discussion about angle of attack and in Honda. Stand by. You know, still waiting for a call back to meet Chef and Harvey. One year IFR flight plan to Honda. Anyway, Hotel Whiskey, copy. Zoolander. I'm an XF-18 Super Hornet instructor pilot with Lawrence Balter of the Maui Flight Academy, flying Italy Hotel Whiskey, just like I did the Super Hornet with AOA. So tell me about the hardest thing to do as a Navy pilot. Uh, by far and away the hardest and scariest thing to do as a carrier aviator or naval aviator is landing on board the aircraft carrier. Daytime is pretty tough and at night is uh, the hardest and most challenging thing I've ever done as a pilot. And I, I would say that most carrier aviators in the U.S. Navy would tell you the same thing. You have a call sign called Zoolander. What's the story? Right, so in 2007, after conducting a combat mission over Afghanistan, I had come back to land on the John C. Stennis, had entered holding just like any other night, and upon reaching the holding fix, put in a left control input to turn left, and my aircraft kept on going flying straight. So I had lost all lateral stick authority and was unable to turn the aircraft with normal inputs. So upon declaring that emergency, it may have been two or three in the morning, uh, they had come back and responded, you know, Black Knight 154, same nature of emergency, and what came out of my mouth was uh, Tower Knight 154, I can't turn left. Something to that effect. So if you remember around that time, you know, there were some very popular movies, most of them comedies. We had old school Anchorman, Wedding Crashers, and of course Zoolander was making the rounds. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those scenes that was famous. Problem I had since I was a baby. Can't turn left. Although that was a funny scene from the movie, it was not funny at the time. And about an hour and a half later, after multiple requests to maybe set up for a controlled ejection, and not even take the chance I had to land this aircraft without lateral stick authority. And the only control over I had, the only control that I had over the aircraft was with power and rudder. So I'm here to tell that story. Thankfully I'm alive, but it was the most difficult, harrowing experience of my entire life. Wow. But across the board, I would say that the glaring, the most glaring gap or opportunity for improvement that I see is there is zero talk about the importance of AOA in the landing pattern and why using AOA as a benchmark for your VFR landings is not only safe, but can allow the pilot to become very skilled and very predictable regardless of what airfield you're landing at. And for me, when I was a military instructor and even now as a CFI and, and CFII, I always tell my students, look, the landing pattern, it's a combination of this scientific equation, but it's also an art form. So if you want to solve that equation and turn this pattern into something that's beautiful, that you can manipulate no matter where you're at, it requires not only an understanding of AOA, but your control over variables that exist in the landing pattern no matter where you go. Altitude airspeed, a beam distance, configuration changes. The more skilled and capable a new pilot or even an experienced pilot can get at always being on altitude, always being on airspeed, being the correct beam distance, using the correct angle of bank, now the landing pattern really becomes a, a question of when do I turn, where am I going to roll out on final, and how do I handle or any type of error between my beam and when I roll out on short final. So GA pilots, they're 
a lot of them are taught to land with the stall horn blaring or the stall horn, you know, just starting to, to come on. Um, how did you land an F-18 on a... On heading, or on course, on glide slope, on speed, that our head would pass through a box six foot by six foot. That's how we would grab the three wire. How to teach a student to do that the same way every time, despite where you are on short final, are you high and fast, are you low and slow, uh, what about crosswind, how long is your runway, and how wide is your runway, it's, it's a lot to ask. So what I like to do is go through a, a brief yet thorough discussion of what AOA is, why it's important, and how it can help you, not only in the landing pattern, anywhere uh, out there in, in the air, but it will help you maintain the ideal speed for not only the conditions that you're in, but your configuration and gross weight. So in the Airman Certification Standards for the Private Pilot License, it talks about normal approach, soft field approach, and short field approach. Yep. And they say in there that every approach should be flown identically, which is at 1.3 1.3 times VSO. So nowhere in that certification standard does it say that the stall horn must be blaring upon landing. Correct. So did you stall uh, land the F-18 on carriers? I'd be dead if I did that. I, I, no. Thankfully, no. And there's a very specific reason for having to fly that aircraft on speed. And that's a result of when we are coming back to land, we don't know what our gross weight's going to be. We don't know what our configuration is going to be. We don't know if we're gonna have half a full fuel tank on the right wing, ordnance on the left wing. So again, that's the art form part of it. You're never coming back to land on the carrier at the same gross weight and the same configuration every time. So if you know what on speed is for your aircraft, then you know you are right in that sweet spot between not having enough lift, which is stalling, and being too fast, which for a normal runway, that can lead to an excessive float, uh, excessive speeds on the ground. You can... Uh, In the Cirrus, you could porpoise. You could porpoise. Prop, yeah. Not enough braking. And so it, it really behooves the pilot and it's in their benefit to understand in, in the Cirrus, what that blue donut is, what it's telling you, and if you can fly that speed and keep that nose angle steady, then everything else is easier to solve for. So one of the, the side benefits of having an angle of attack indicator above the dashboard in the heads-up display format like we're using, the end benefit is having a perfect landing, right? Correct. But the design and the reason for its existence uh, help prevent loss of control. Correct. So can you explain to the audience, like and from your experience in F-18, how you just not only used it for landing, but in other ways, like fighting, dog fighting and- Yep. And, uh, yeah. Yep, so I think what we spoke to briefly upon landing here at HANA is my trying to figure out the feedback of the flight controls, what that actually felt like when we were on speed mm -hmm. with that blue donut. All right, blue donut's in. Auto traffic 808 Alpha, left crosswind uh, to the downwind on us. So once I got a feel for what that was and how the aircraft flew on speed, then if I'm high or I'm low on short final, I know what the next step is immediately to correct that error without having to worry about my airspeed. As long as I see that blue donut, I know that the nose is in the perfect position, the main mounts are gonna hit first, I'm nowhere close to stalling, and I don't have to look at airspeed, whether I'm zero flaps, half flaps, or full flaps. I don't have to go there. Right. Does that make sense? And so when you're in combat with another aircraft, the F-18 Super Hornet, one of its most advantageous capabilities was being able to maneuver and fight at slow speeds. And although I can't give you those numbers in terms of what alpha we were flying, if you were a pilot that was capable and excellent at flying or fighting the F-18 Super Hornet at that prescribed alpha in a one circle fight, which for all you naval aviators out there, you know what I'm talking about, the last one to the wall wins, not only will you flush out your adversary, but then you can break that alpha, get that nose down, and prosecute your target. So in civilian terms, it's the sweet spot of the wing. Yes, yes, it provides the most lift mm -hmm. and the least drag mm -hmm. right in that, what we'll call it a sweet spot, right. in between right. stall speed and getting fast. I mean, the insurance policy is that with blue donut, you're 30% above your stall. Correct. No matter what, so no matter the bank angle. Yep. No matter the load factor. No matter the winds. 
no matter the winds. So uh, it's, it's the happy spot, the happy place for the wing. Correct. So <clears throat> whenever I ask pilots sometimes, you know, it's a, kind of a trick question. I, I sit them down and I say, you know, what, whatever, fly, whatever aircraft they're flying, I always ask them, what's your stall speed? And they always have a book number. You know? Yes. And so, but, but that changes based on your flaps, your gross weight, uh, altitude, or field airspeed. elevation, you just stall it airspeed. airspeed. Right. 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 And so Power we always, setting. And we always stall at the same angle of attack. So, uh, so it seems to me that it's the much more precise way to control the aircraft and have a, you know, a, a controlled experience throughout the entire operating envelope of the aircraft. I would agree. I would say it is the universal language of aviation and for pilots in any configuration knowing I am not going to stall the wing. I am in a safe regime of flight. My power and energy package is exactly where I need it and my nose angle is exactly where I need it for this regime of flight. And again, we're talking about the VFR landing pattern. It's a lot better knowing when you're on short final, maybe you're a little low with a gust of wind, at least I'm on speed. So I'm gonna hold my nose where it's at, add a little power, get back up to glide slope, maintain that blue donut as I pull a little power off and a little back on to catch it, to catch that glide slope and just be confident all the way down to touchdown. These are some of the most <laughs> violent winds <laughs> I've ever experienced. <laughs> and they're never right down the runway. And here we call it Tuesday. It's about yeah, <laughs> 90 degrees off. Uh, so, and right. here's another thing. There's a lot of wind shear here. Yeah. Which is extremely dangerous to a pilot in an aircraft at, at low airspeeds and high angle of attack. So if you're slow, i.e. you have too much AOA, and you get hit with a gust of wind shear, your chances are not that good, right? But if I get that gust of wind shear and I know I'm on speed, I'll, get, I'll take that fast. I'll get a little fast on purpose just to combat that one gust and then go right back to on speed. Right. I know exactly where safe is. I know exactly where I need to be. And again, it just creates this feeling of confidence and ease and comfort, which I think for a new pilot and even an experienced pilot, when you're getting ready to land, if you don't know what all these things mean and how to correct for errors, uh, it, it can be a very dangerous regime of flight. So I just, that's why I love it. Yeah, get back up in the air here and uh, finish up. So uh, I appreciate you coming out. No, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank for you for teaching me how to fly the yeah. Cirrus and yeah. signing me out on it. Yeah, you to fly the F-18, then we're even. Sounds good, that's a deal. <laughs>